Everybody, welcome to the Storm Talk. Uh, Brian Good here. As we head through the next few days, got some changes to talk about, and uh, we'll update you on next week and uh, a brief update on how June is uh, trending. The rest of June. Welcome to the first day of it. Nice look at our Kentucky One Sky Truck camera. A bit of a breeze there into Bardstown at the moment. Uh, we've been tracking. Uh, this is not rain, by the way, uh, here across this area. Um, I get my wand to work. There we go. Uh, this is though where we do have some showers tracking across our southern tier of counties. And uh, this activity is, is not severe anything, but it is uh, a boundary that's uh, stretching out from Missouri all the way into southern Kentucky down into the Smokies there. And uh, showers struggling as they get closer to this area of central Kentucky because the air is drier uh, in pockets here as we head across uh, our neck of the woods. You can see how there's a bit of moisture right there near Grayson County, and then you get to the east and it drops off and the uh, thunderstorms are fading and reacting to that. It's also the reason why our rain chance is not high or even on the charts really for the rest of wave country uh, because the dry air coming in from the north today is allowing just enough to uh, keep things in check. Anywhere though we see the, the darker green, that is your zone where these downpours are possible and it looks to be just on the edges there of wave country. In fact, the uh, herd model, high res model that we have, is trying to show our dew point dropping to 40 later this afternoon. That may be a little extreme. Right now our dew point is 53. Uh, but that's possible to see a, a drop in the dew points. Now, the thing is with that, we call that mixing of the atmosphere. When we, we see uh, dew points drop, dry air work its way in, the thermometer can react to that. And we usually can see an overachieving day, as we call it, in temperature. Right now, the forecast high is 85. Now, if that were to be the reality, we dropped to 40, uh, we could easily get to 86, 87 today. Uh, right now, though, I think that's a little too low on the dew point. Uh, maybe you know, 48, 46, something like that, possibly. Uh, but we'll go with 85 for the high. But dry air heats and cools rapidly in either direction compared to humid air. So that's the reason why uh, a couple things. It keeps our rain chance out of the picture and allows for a very warm day. All right, enough about that. Let me show you the high-res models real quick, showing how the activity again scooting across the southern tier of counties. You can see more than one wave, and it tries to throw something mass at 2 in the morning, but I think that's kind of a false echo at this point. Um, here is a look at what we call the peat watts, precipital water. Anywhere when you cross into the blue, that's where you enter the rain chance category and a little more humid air. This is the uh, P-Watt for tomorrow. Uh, notice a good chunk of wave country is in the drier air still. It's holding tough. This is the change from yesterday as we were seeing a little more of an angle to it uh, influencing uh, at least I-65 in west for a, a shower thunderstorm. Now, the trend has been to angle it a little more. Therefore, we've taken the rain chance out for now. I, I can't rule out a small chance for a thunderstorm to pop up, but I don't think it's even worth the 10% yet. Ryan and Kevin, when they get in later, they may change their minds and add it in if new data comes in and supports uh, that blue area being a little more to the north. It wouldn't surprise me, but uh, that's the trend anyway for now. Uh, and then as we did Saturday, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's funny, it looks like Pac-Man, giant Pac-Man face about to gobble us up right here. Uh, but notice it's kind of surrounding us, the donut hole and in a different way. Uh, over the Louisville area, but uh, the moisture level increases to the north and increases the, to the south. So we do have a small rain chance or thunderstorm chance on Saturday. There is a bit of a boundary here across Cincinnati, so I think the chance may be a little more of an issue in this area than it would be to our south. There may be too much warm air south and, uh, and cap things off in our southern counties. But either way, because of that trend, uh, we've raised the numbers there too. In fact, upper 80s, 90 is not out of the reach there, our first 90 degree day on Saturday. It, it's certainly possible. If we have enough dry air, we could overachieve and get there, and uh, uh, the cloud cover can stay sparse enough, that is possible. But humidity level will increase, and again, humid air doesn't heat and cool as rapidly, so if, if this model is wrong and we have a little more humid air at play, not only do we have a slightly better chance for a few thunderstorms, but we won't be as hot. All right, so we'll watch that. All right, and then on Sunday, well, <laughs> All bets are off on Sunday. Uh, we're all into the humid air. Rain chance stays high uh, for Sunday. The reason why, I've, right now, I've kept it at 60% is it looks like a broken line of thunderstorms moving through than a solid line. Uh, but if the data trends more toward a solid band or even a squall line type setup for Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, then we'll have to raise the rain chance up substantially. But uh, we'll wait on that. Uh, wind fields, okay, not overly impressive. A little more toward Ohio and Pennsylvania. If there's going to be a slight risk or even a marginal, it will likely be drawn here first and iffy for central Kentucky, but more so for Ohio and Pennsylvania. Uh, when you look at instability, it's certainly there. Uh, and again, same spots, mainly north and east of towns where your instability is a bit higher. When you look at the sounding, in fact, it's given us a, a reading of marginal severe for Sunday afternoon evening. 
And really, when you look at the indices here, we got, you know, lifted indices are up there. They're all negative. Uh, we got some CAPE, about 1,000 to 2,000. That's decent. Uh, downdraft CAPE, not very high, only about three to 400. And then as you to the shear, only about 20, maybe 30 knots. That's a limiting factor there. Uh, and again, there are some more dry air pockets found up to the north, but still fairly saturated in the southern flank there of uh, the atmosphere. So uh, marginal severe, I think it's fair. A few warnings can certainly be issued. I uh, wouldn't rule it out. And uh, depending on how quickly these storms pop, they'll pop in Indiana first and work their way down. How quickly that happens will determine how warm we can get. But I think uh, 87 right now is reachable. If they delay themselves longer than uh, 3 or 4 in the afternoon, we'll go higher than that. All right, next week on the backside of the system, again, here's the models and samples, GFS, Euro, Canadian. Still uh, showing the influence at upper low Tuesday and Wednesday, but not as far west. Uh, when we look at the GFS, it has some influence on us, but not as much as yesterday. The ensembles agree with it. Uh, the Euro, a bit more west than the GFS. The Canadian is not so much that it's west. It's just that it, yesterday I had it in the Great Lakes. Now it's got it dipping down closer to low. But when you look at the ensemble, it still keeps it up to the north. So the overall trends really are for some influence next week. It doesn't look as impressive as a cloud shield and shower activity as it did uh, yesterday at this time. We'll see what the midday models say when they come in. And when we head into the leader next week, another front moves in. Uh, GFS, uh, well, sorry, let me back up. Euro has the front moving in here next Friday. G, uh, the Euro has it already through here by Friday, so it aims for the front passing on Thursday. So there's a full day's difference uh, between our long range models and when the front arrives next week, Thursday or Friday. And ensembles aim a little more toward Thursday, but we'll see how that plays out. And then I'll ignore the top row here, just like the bottom row. We're starting to see the jet begin to flatten out a bit, which may allow the heat to build in. But this could allow for some upper 80s and lower 90s uh, if it builds into the area. Nothing record breaking, but it may allow for a stretch of hot weather toward the middle of the month. Although signs are still there as of yesterday of another cool shot later in the month. New models are coming in tonight. I'll share what those say about that part of the forecast coming up tomorrow on the block. We'll see you then.